Sure. Well, hi, everyone. Um, welcome, Idris. We're so happy to have you. Um, just for housekeeping things, everyone out there, if you do have a question, we're going to ask that you use the raise your hand feature on the bottom of your Zoom screen so it can feel as much as a conversation as we can have. And if you're not comfortable showing your video, feel free to use the Q&A feature at the bottom. We can take questions that way. Um, so Idris, before we get started, I just want to encourage you, you can ask the directors whatever you like. And directors, feel free to interact with Idris however way you like. Um, but we're just going to start off with one question, Idris, and then you can take it away, is um, why did you decide to make these plays so accessible this year in particular? Um, well, first off, shout out everybody uh, for all your work, creativity, and doing these and taking the time, you know, in this um, climate, uh, I think every, everything is a little harder, you know, doing anything takes extra effort because, you know, what our normal routines were, were so disrupted. And so every single thing we do is like, we're, we're, you know, uh, forging new terrain. So uh, it's not lost on me, uh, the amount of work and planning, coordinating, and patience and flexibility it took to pull something like this off. So, um, so just want to honor all everybody for that work. Um, so hashtag matter and black flag I wrote um, during the sort of first spike of Black Lives Matter uh, in the era of Trayvon and Mike Brown and Eric Garner and Alton Sterling. And um, I was teaching at a college at the time. And so that's, you know, that's kind of why the the characters in that play are kind of, you know, are young adults. Um, flash forward, uh, I was, you know, I, you know, I have two kids now and we were all home and my mother-in-law lives with us now too. And so this summer, you know, Brianna, Ahmaud Arbery, George Floyd, and uh, similarly, you know, I, I wrote for, you know, kind of the similar situation that I was in, which I was with curious children and in a, in a residential neighborhood with lots of these Black Lives Matter flags or um, signs, uh, you know, popping up in their lawns. You know, I was living in Louisville. Sorry to chime in, Idris, but people are having a little bit hard time hearing you. Are you able to speak up a little bit more? Mm -hmm. How's that? Is that better? Yes. Yeah. Is that better? Thank yeah. you. Okay. Um, I'm trying to remember what I said a second ago. Um, I, I, <laughs> I mean, I you know, I I I respond. I typically um, respond to the climate. So you know, whatever is going on in the world, in the nation, and how it affects black folks, I typically respond right away. You know, I came up doing hip hop music. I really enjoy freestyling in the cypher. And in the cypher, you know, it's it's about what you, you respond to what's happening. You know, you're in the now. The machinery of playmaking is so slow. Um, and people, we needed to have these conversations and do these plays right now. So, um, because we're in a reality where I knew everybody was home and everybody was by a computer, I said, I'm just going to do these. And, you know, Black Flag and Hashtag Matter were two plays that already existed. So, um, I just wrote three more, you know, Act Free, Juneteenth, and Water Gun Song. Um, I just wrote those and I called my friends at TYUSA and I said, let's, let's just drop these and we'll just, whoever wants them can have them. And thankfully, um, all types of people responded and, you know, colleges and high schools and theater companies like Dallas Children's Theater and uh, Columbus, uh, you know, uh, theater, you know, and then also community theaters and, you know, everybody. And that's been extraordinary uh, to me. Um, so anyway, that's that's uh, that's a little bit of background. And sorry for the audio issues. I'm I'm trying to trying out like a new microphone. 
and I, I, it's hard to hear your, you know, you can't really hear yourself. So uh, keep letting me know if the sound continues to be funky. Okay, thank you. No problem. Um, so directors, would either of you like to share kind of what gravitated you to the piece that you ended up directing? I can go. Hi, Idris, good to meet you, I'm Rosalind. Um, these are all so beautiful. And what, what drew me to the project as a whole, I mean, was um, just the clarity and simplicity um, yet there's so much nuance in each one, but it was just so every, everything clearly, each issue to me was so clearly articulated um, and the feelings around them were really clearly articulated in each piece. But I think for Act Free, um, well, one what drew me to it was that um, in the language, it's a bit more abstract. Um, and I love that the different, each character in it kind of has their own journey of where they are and this idea of freedom and it kind of ebbs and flows and they kind of bounce off of each other these ideas um and that you're not really sure what's going to happen to these three um but um yeah I also wanted to um ask you Idris just if you could elaborate a little bit on the um I guess like that the like abstract sort of liminal nature of the language in that one in comparison to the other ones, even though the event is very clear to us in history, um, but kind of like the different use of language in that one. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that, um, you know, I, I think I wanted to avoid, it, it, I didn't want to write a, a, a history play. Like it's not a history play. It's a, it's a play about, it's a philosophical thing that, you know, the, the idea of freedom is something that people still talk about now. I mean, even even you know the people who are upset about having to wear a mask, and you know they're they're anxious about you know if one party you know gets the White House. You know, everyone's worried about freedom, and it's ironic that a nation that was built on literally taking other people's freedom away from them is also obsessed with freedom, and so the goal there was to have a meditation comedically in this sort of very bitter, sweet, uh, tragic comedy. Um, yeah, just, just a con cause, cause you know, and, and really it's the sort of thing that you could, you could, you could open up conversation in a lot of different ways around it. And that's my goal with all of these is to have conversation just, just for people to have conversation, you know, and I've written those plays, like I've written those history capital H, like it is 18, whatever, whatever. And that's who this person is. And, you know, this is the day they die and all that kind of stuff. And that's that's not what that one is what it's supposed to be. Anyone else want to share? Um, hi again, Idris. So good to see you again. Um, I, I was so happy to work on Black Flag because I talked a lot with my cast about how college is, especially freshman year, is such a intense first encounter. Like, and for all these characters, they all can't, we decided they all came from different parts. So like Deja's from Detroit and like obviously Sydney's from Georgia and Harry's from California. So they're all coming and we decided like, let's be in like the Northeast. And it's just like, everything is so new. And I love that there was so much nuance of like, Deja was able to see both sides, but knew that she was like, in, like really hurt by it, like hurt by this Confederate flag, but like she also didn't want to like ruffle feathers. So I felt like there was just so much nuance and rather than like, this is either good or bad, like obviously a Confederate flag in a room is just bad. But I, I think there was something uh, of like Deja wanting to not ruffle feathers, not want to um, be portrayed or seen as an angry black woman and try like there's just it's just such a hard space to navigate when everything is so new there's new classes new schedule new this new that so I, I think that it really captured the essence of freshman year and how do you navigate tough racist situations especially maybe a situation that you've never been in before um and I found that to be like really powerful so I enjoyed working on that and finding all those dynamics <laughs> yeah thank you very much Jasmine it's good to see you too by the way Jasmine and I go back we know each other from the company one days 
Yes. <laughs> Which is still going on. I don't know why I'm saying that like you're over. <laughs> um, I'll share as well. I uh, believe I'm the only first time director here, um, but I'm an educator. So I that's what really drew me to um, this project. Um, I did not choose um, to direct Water Gun Song. And honestly, I just wanted to be assigned one, but that was at the bottom of my list just because I was terrified to have to deal with the, the conversation. Um, I don't have children, I have a nephew, but I identify definitely more with the parent character, Jules. Um, so I really, um, I really appreciated what um, Camila brought to the role because as I was reading the play and kind of prepping in my head, I really could not get out of like an anger and sense of fear and instilling that in a child. So the first couple of reads of Camila, I was like, oh, that's like, I like that approach. That's really nice. Um, and I think I put it in the brochure, but my hope is that this play, the way that it was, um, you know, done in this setting could be a model for those who have to have this conversation with children in the future or now. Um, and then also give a glimpse for people who never have to have this conversation of what the conversation is. Um, I can't imagine anybody ever, you know, if you're in, if you know a black or brown family, I can't imagine you saying like, hey, can I sit in? And like, that's not something you do, but with this play then people really get the sense of, you know, here's an approach um, and I would also just add the um, child in that play is supposed to be seven. So that helps to kind of frame what audiences it could be appropriate for. Yeah, great. Thank you. And and thank you for, for diving in. You know, I know that feeling when you're just like, okay, okay, all right. No, because <laughs> I couldn't tell from watching. I couldn't tell it. Yeah. Yes. Okay, well, we have a couple of um, raised hands and I'm going to try... Oh, they gone. Oh, wait, they here. Okay. Uh, oh gosh. Sorry, y'all. I see them. I don't know how to click them. Uh, let me help. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to go into the participants here. Um, actually, oh, you can. You got it. Yeah. Okay. Um. So, Portia Williams, I'm gonna put it on you. One second. Okay, and Portia will be joining us as a panelist if I did this correctly. So let's see. You can also unmute Portia if oh. you want to. Yeah. Yeah, it looks like Portia has talking permitted next to her name. So she can okay. jump in, it looks like. Hi, Portia, are you there? Hi, how are you? <laughs> Hi, good. <laughs> Wonderful. Um, so first, um, I, I'm kind of going to piggyback off of what Brittany just shared. So first of all, Brittany, congratulations on your first directorial opportunity. That's so exciting. Um, I'm super, oh, you're wearing a Spelman sweatshirt. I love it. Okay. Um, <laughs> okay you can turn uh, your video on now if you if you want to. Oh, I can? I think so, yeah. Oh, I don't know how to do that. Okay, don't worry. <laughs> it's okay. Okay. Um, but I would like to um, piggyback off a little bit what Brittany shared about, um, you know, you started off with Water Gun Song with being um, about children, right? And being in this conversation curated around um, children and having these conversations. So I would like to know about the intentionality of the curation of the plays and what specific reasoning um, was behind the ordering of how they were presented to us um, and just how we witnessed them. Um, so can you talk a little bit more about that? Because I noticed like the intensity was just rising and rising and going up. And as a black person, I wasn't uncomfortable at all, but I would just like to, you know, um, ask, you know, what was the intentionality behind all of that? Thank you. Thank you, Portia. Um, Idris, I don't know if you want to tackle it, but I know on Andrea and uh, my side, we literally just took the same order um, from the website. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> um, no, they don't. They really don't have a particular one uh, order. I mean, I, I think, you know, one way you could do it is I think the way that TYA USA ordered them was probably by age. Mm. So Water Gun song, song is the youngest. And so in, in a way, it's almost like you're following one character, perhaps. Mm through 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 their growth i suppose though black flag or or hashtag matter you could you could maybe interchange but i think that was the idea is that um 
you know, uh, Water Gun Song, Ju- June Teeth and Act Free are kind of the younger, you know, the joints you could do for uh, younger younger people. And then the Black Flag and Hashtag Matter are more on the, you know, 14 and up, 15 and up side. So I think that's probably why. Mm, interesting. Yeah. yeah. But you're right. There is like, there is an intensity that was growing that I think is, that I felt was really powerful in terms of just overall it's almost like it it, it's almost like i need i as a white person that i needed that intensity if that makes sense that i needed you know what i mean i you know that it it just we're we're seeing this as it's as it's getting more intense and more intense and it's just well you know where else are we you know we got to do something about this you know what i mean Mm. yeah 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 Thank you. Oh, we have more hands. Um, next, we have um, Michelle Harris. I'm going to promote you to panelist, and we're going to see. Okay, Michelle, can you speak? I um, can you hear me? Yes. Yes, you can. Yes. Okay. Hi, everyone. <laughs> um, I just want to congratulate everyone. I really enjoyed this experience, um, but a special congratulations to Krista and Brittany. I'm really proud of you guys. This was really awesome. Um, I don't have a question. I, I think it's more more so a comment. Um, I am a biracial um, woman. I'm half black and half white. And I recently discovered, um, you know, sort of during all of the racial injustice that's occurring in our country, I have found myself being more vocal and really standing in my my blackness more often than I ever have. Um, and I'm over 50 years old, so it's it's not a new experience, but it, the, the the passion and in, in is is far more. Um, I'm just I'm able to to say what I want to say and not really have much regard or have little regard, but. Um, you know, not necessarily as much. And I, I think um, I, I really related to, to Deja. I, um, I realized that um, as a biracial person and particularly in my work environment, I was always making sure white people felt comfortable around me. Um, and in fact, most white people, it, you know, in, in my experience and, and certainly back when I was an adolescent and a young adult saw me as white. I mean, people would say that to me. And of course, I was always confused because I'm not white. My skin's not white. Um, but I found myself really just accommodating people in the workplace because I I didn't want to be un- I didn't want them to be uncomfortable. Um, I wanted to make sure that I wasn't causing any conflict um, with my responses. And in fact, was called an angry black woman by a dean on my campus many years ago. Um, so. I, I, I guess that what I want to say is it was really validating to see others feeling that same way, sort of making these accommodations for folks so that they're not so uncomfortable around them. And, you know, I'm really glad that I'm able now to not be so concerned about others' comfortability around me. Um, so my voice has has really grown on campus. I've made a lot of really great changes to the, the culture and I'm feeling like I, I do have a voice as a black woman when I didn't always feel like I did. Um, so I just want to thank you for, for that particular experience for me because it has helped out personally um, to, to just to, to validate that what I have to say matters and, um, and that I was in fact really making other people feel comfortable when I should not have been. So I'm kind of taking an ownership that um, I'm just starting to be more connected with. So just wanted to say thank you for that. And I, the films were all very brilliant. I, I really, the films, the plays were brilliant. Um, and I look forward to hopefully more to come. This was, this was really great. And I definitely would pay a lot of money to have had this hour. So I'll, I'll make a donation um, later on today. So thank you. Thank you for sharing that, Michelle. That's uh, very personal stuff, and I'm glad you shared it with us. And, uh, you know, the thing that I was really hoping t- 
to convey with Black Flag because in earlier drafts, uh, the first time that I workshopped it as when it was much newer, uh, the director I was working with, you know, was like, we need to know more of why Deja is not saying something or why she didn't yank the flag down and all this kind of stuff. And I said, well, you know, I mean, because like, who does that? <laughs> like, like who really does that? Like in a movie or in a play, of course, we're like, yeah, that's right. But like, do you really do that? You know, on all the stuff that we navigate every single day, you know? So, but, but she was right in the fact that I think we needed to see that. We needed to see someone name that as a choice to someone non-black, you know, and, 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 and sort of like that moment to me is probably the thing that I'm most proud of in that show is because it is we make these choices as people of color you know like marginalized people we make choices and those choices are they're impossible they're catch 20 so there's no wrong choice the day's just not wrong she's not wrong she's not right it is what it is which is why at the end she's still in that room still with that flag and it's sydney that's really gone on the journey not to say that Deja hasn't either, but, but you know, it's Sydney. And that's kind of the point is that Sydney's like, all right, I'm ready for you to take it down now. And she's like, no, I'm, I've made my choice. <laughs> I'm just trying to get through this school and then I'm up out of here. I don't have to look at this flag ever again. Why like, you ain't going to, you ain't going to throw me off the rails. Right. So, you know, I'm very proud of that moment because I think it really speaks to something that I think is more important, which is. You know, we have to navigate. We have to make these choices, you know. So, Michelle, like, you you made, you know, like, these are big choices you've had to make for a long time, you know. And, and they were the right choices, you know. And, and um, good on you for making those choices. But also, it's really powerful to hear you say, even, you know, even making all those choices that you're able to still reflect and say, well, all right, you know, no mas. <laughs> right? Like, maybe not so much anymore. You know, so thank you. Thank you, Michelle. Thank you, Idris. Um, We have a couple more raised hands. I'm going to make it so we can hear from Daphne Wells. Okay, Daphne, are you there? Can you hear me? Yes. Hi. Hello. How are you all? Um, like others have said, thank you for this. Shout out to my soror, Brittany. Good congratulations on your um, directorial debut. Um, and I don't know if any of the actors are also listening in on this, but questions for like the actors or directors, even the writer. Um, I know for myself, listening in and watching the plays that there was like very much like visceral reactions that I had um, because um, the experiences are so real. Um, I'm also an educator and there's, you know, a lot of these conversations are happening amongst my students and even just amongst our staff. And, you know, particularly like, you know, the water gun, water gun, water gun song. Um, you know, one of my sorority sisters, like Tamira Rice is her cousin, right? And, you know, we have a flagpole outside of our student union and we raised the Black Lives Matter flag post George Floyd. And I got a lot of flack for raising that flag, you know, as director of the union, I had the ability to do that. And the conversations like with the black flag, like literally happening on our campus, like right now, like this week, you know, dealing with that stuff. And so there's like a lot of emotion that's going on, just me just as a spectator. And so just wondering, like, as the directors, as the actors, as the writers, like when you're like actually in it and like, you know, like kind of living it in that moment, like two questions. One is like, how are you, like, what is your feelings and your reactions? And also like, how do you all like take a moment to step back and kind of take care of yourself? Because I know like for me, like when I leave these meetings, you know, like I have my little sounding board people, you know, you got to be all professional, like when you're doing the work, but you know, it's very real and you're dealing with it. And so, and you like, how do you all kind of take care of yourselves or how did you take care of yourselves during the time when you were dealing with these topics that are like very real and can be very hurtful for some folks based on your identities? Brittany, I don't know if you wanna um, answer that and I'll see if I can find Camilla and Jalen. I would also just say, Krista, I don't know if there are other actors who wanted to speak 
you depending on timing. Um, hi, Soro, thank you so much for being here. Um, oh, taking care of myself, so much of it, I think. I So one thing I did, honestly, um, I think the other directors know, I did not see the other plays until today. Um, that's just something I did personally. I I love the arts. I love plays in general. I find them very personal and I know how I tend to react. So I didn't want to have like things running on a loop. Um, and then for myself and directing, I when I was really in the process, um, most of you, if you don't know, the magic of Zoom recording, <laughs> everything was pre-recorded. So it was kind of easy to clear my mind and just focus on like, okay, um, you know, were these lines correct in this scene? And, you know, was the angle right? If you saw mine, we didn't move that much. Um, so that was kind of okay. But as far as self-care, I think I'm gonna have to still think about it because watching the play that I directed today and then everyone else's afterward, they, they hit a little different, honestly. Um, so I think I'm still I'm still working on the self care. I don't know if other folks want to chime in. There's some folks who um, want to. Oh. Oops, sorry. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> um, for for us in terms of self care, because um, we also my cast. Um, I was me, and I scheduled during election week. So we were recording like the day after the, like the election night, like two days after um, our rehearsal. I think we got on like, I think, Amani, hi. Um, we, our rehearsal, I think was 10 minutes after it was announced that Biden was like one. So like we were like deep in it. So, <laughs> um, but in terms for us for self-care, I was like, listen, like we are people before we are actors, directors, whatever. So we did a lot of like, exercises together there was one day I think we spent like 30 minutes just like breathing and like listening to music and like stretching and I think we just have to kind of find like what like what works for you um I know I think I don't want to speak for you Imani but I know you spoke about writing a lot too and especially with that play and just I know you were trying to like get into like uh Sydney Deja's mind with Deja also that character wrote as a way to kind of get out of like this space with being with a roommate who put up a Confederate flag. So I'm gonna pass it to Amani if you wanna talk anything, but it's so good to see you, hi. Hello, <laughs> so good to see all of you. Great job, thank you Idris for your words and your stories and thank you directors for making them come together. It was fantastic to watch, really, really nice. Um, to answer the question of how I deal with things is like, just like Jasmine said, like taking a moment to breathe and um, let your body kind of get into a better place uh, to be able to be malleable, to be uh, like performing as a character is really important, I think. Um, recognizing, not ignoring the state of the world is really important to me. Um, and actually I was late to that rehearsal because I had just found out about the election. So I was like, I'm so sorry. And she gave a lot of grace. She's like, yeah, it's, I mean, is a big deal so it makes sense um and also another thing that i found was really helpful that i didn't even think about till just now was um when maggie when they spoke up it, like being a black person in any cast like in the past or now like it's always i feel like it's important to be careful as a director like to not put the spotlight on the people of color in the show to be like, oh, okay, here's the race thing. Why don't you address it? Like, hello, no, I'm trying to get through my day. I'm trying to live my life, keep it together. Ugh. So I think it was really important um, and really helpful that Maggie, uh, the person who played Sydney, they spoke up about where they were coming from and how things were affecting them and how throughout the process of the play, they were like, oh, wow, like this does happen, or oh, I recognize this privilege, or oh, wow, this is hard, or, you know, speaking about that kind of thing, I think that's really important. And um, yeah, yeah, that, I think that's all I have to say. <laughs> We've also um, gotten some requests to hear from um, Cyril and Sarah, if you all want to share. I can jump in. Um, first of all, hi, Idris. Um, thank you so much for this opportunity. Um, this, your words are incredible. Um, I think for me as a director, um, I am very much like in my art and everything about just like changing the system. And I know that sounds like radical, but um, 
like I've been in so many for just context I'm still a student um this shocked my cast um, I'm 20 years old <laughs> so I'm like still in the the mix of like getting my degree and learning these things and I've been through so many different paths where you have the director that everyone comes here and check everything you're feeling at the door and let's go or it's you know professionalism only and I try to just break that down as much as I can because you know Jasmine said like we're, someone said we're people first um and I know from being an actor that if you come into a room and you're not feeling 100 percent the presentation of what you're doing is not going to be 100 percent, and that's not a bad thing so every rehearsal for me starts with a check-in and we just talk about how we're doing um and answer some random question that i think of um and i think that that's just a really good way to ground everybody you know i think there's there's parts of taking care of yourself that happen outside of rehearsal but when you come into rehearsal it's not so much about checking what you're feeling at the door it's about inviting it into the space almost so that we all know it's here this is how we're feeling and how do we base the rehearsal off of you know the energy that we have if we're not 100 percent one day you can't force that you know to happen so that's just kind of how i go about it and sarah if you want to share yes i am trying to put thoughts into words um yes hi um <laughs> i'm sarah um and i guess uh just something that i'm thinking about based on like everything that we've talked about is that for me as a director with uh, Nothing Rhymes with June Queens, I think I was really coming from a, the, a place of highlighting the rap. And just like, like for me, I, I come, I have a, I've grown up playing music and just loving music. Um, not, I'm not a rapper, I am, I don't, but I love listening to rap, but I understand that fr what I know about the history of rap is that it's coming from, it's about this a person's unique voice and the the power of the written word. I mean, yeah, I I actually am taking a music production class, so I mean, we'll see. <laughs> um, but I love this idea that it's it's the, a rapper is a writer. They are putting words, and it's their voice. Um, and so throughout our process, I really wanted um, Joyce, our actor that played Pete, that did the rap. I wanted to make her feel like a star at the end of the process. It's like, it's about like, it's about a kid being able to put out words to like speak their own mind. And you have a parent or a parental figure that's able to just like support them and be like, they really just have to like watch and be there for, for their kids. Cause I think, um, especially now, just like as, as we are learning and more about anti-racism and racism in our history, like kids are just getting smarter and smarter. So we really just gotta let young people do their thing. And so that's kind of the vibe that I was going, coming from as a director. Um, also, yeah, I think as a because it was a space where it was all BIPOC and it was there's just also things that we don't have to talk about. We can just like work and just and we can just talk about the dynamics that exist as parent child, as older sister, younger sister kind of thing. There's um, yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Well said, Sarah. Um, I want to be mindful of the time. We have like three more questions left, but I don't know if we have time for three. It's 4.55. How are we feeling? Karen Idris? You think that's okay? Okay. Um, okay, so we have Idris. Florence. Yeah. Oh, great. Okay. We have a Florence Adabu. I'm going to... Okay. Florence, are you there? Yes. Can you hear me? Yes. Hello. Yay. Well, congratulations to everyone. And I just have to do a major shout out to my Spelman sister, Brittany Mackey. I'm already coming for you, you know. Um, but still, love is in abundance and plenty. So I just have to just big up just everyone. But special shout out to Brittany. So I just want to say just thank you um, to each of you for just honoring craft. I'm a writer myself. I'm a um, poet. And I also write plays and just sharing stories and just this specific mode of engagement um in the midst of pandemics <laughs> and building um community and awareness around freedom and anti-racism and specifically anti-blackness um uh, so just thank you um just <laughs> for me this is a true testament of how 
um, the personal is political and the political is personal to pull from like my favorite writers, Bell Hook. So um, this question is for everyone, for Idris, the writer, the actors, the directors, whether it be in your own work or in someone else's um, directional debuted work, what symbols or lines resonated with you the most? And specifically for me, I know that watching um, Water Gun Song, I was struck by one of the actresses wearing a hoodie. And for me, it evoked Trayvon Martin and like subverting masculinity and centering black girlhood for me that was really um, important and oftentimes missed in the narratives of murder and black violence and spectacle. Um, so um, I would be interested in hearing from each person on this panel, um, whether it be images or through clothing or languages or space, you know, this isn't on a stage, we're using our personal space <laughs> um, and watching people in space. So I'm, I'm wanting to know what you were trying to evoke, whether it be intentionally or unconsciously um, through the work or maybe in watching other direct their own work what really resonated for you. So thank you. Does anyone feel compelled to, to kick it off? Okay, I can do popcorn. <laughs> I can go, I can, um, something that we thought about, uh, and I'll just be brief, but um, something that we really talked about was this like coded language of like higher ups, uh, arrangement, um, this um they'd be on you know they wouldn't appreciate this like the higher-ups wouldn't appreciate uh if we change the arrangement and um how regan's character number one uh how she sort of uses those words and like has to search for them and how it and how that kind of like um idris was saying it illuminates that kind of philosophical question of freedom in a lot of ways, but also codes like the danger um, behind what they're actually talking about. Um, and so we kind of took those words too in terms of their clothing, kind of being in this businessy sort of casual business, business, like we kind of thought about it as like buy a water cooler, um, where it kind of transcends time a little bit from the historical event that Idris also was avoiding nailing down exactly. Um, but yeah, that's kind of where we came from in terms of kind of linking those languages that those symbols with kind of how they're dressed as well. I'll just piggyback off what you said, Rosalind, because act free really stuck out to me as well, because I feel like in my everyday life, Sometimes I'm like, if I was free, I have these moments sometimes if I'm playing music in my car or if I'm not wearing hoop earrings, like, no, Krista, like, do what you want to do. You can do whatever you want to do. You have that right. So this, like, acting free is something I feel like I'm still doing today, like something I'm grappling with today um, with that. Um, I'm going to pass it to Sarah just for fun. <laughs> Sorry, the, the question is kind of like navigating can, can we, yeah, can someone reword the question? The question I got was like, what are lines, images, symbols that stood out to you in your play and resonated with you deeply? That's kind of what I put, pulled, from, pulled from it, pulled from it. <laughs> okay, well, yes, I feel like, I feel like Nothing Rhymes This Juneteenth is a bit different in, in tone than like the rest of the place. So, I mean, yeah, like the images that I was thinking of are like, honestly like tv shows like fresh prince of bel-air and also the um the song that's mentioned in the in the play uh tennessee by arrested development and just like really paying attention to the styles of music videos and and tv shows of um that are associated with rap culture um and just also thinking about like what is what is the family friendly version too, or like what is what is the version that's like for kids too? Um, I was really, yeah, that those were images for me. All popcorn to just 
Hi. Um, I kind of already spoke about first encounters earlier, but um, I think what really stuck out to me was the line in the last scene. Well, the last scene in general, I really, really love for Black Flag, but when um, Deja says to Sydney, like, um, what does she say exactly? She says, help you take it down or take it down for you, talking about the flag. And I love how like the, the last scene isn't tied up with the bow, like, and Sydney like spends a semester at college and learns how to be anti-racist. And I, just, I it's not that. And I love that Deja was like, you, like, I'm not gonna be, like, this is not the narrative that's gonna happen that I'm gonna be the one that takes it down for you. You must take it down. Like white people must take down their Confederate flags, their Trump flags that like literally are Confederate flags these days, which sidebar, when we were looking to order a Confederate flag, every time we search Confederate flag, Trump flags would come up on Google. So I thought that was just like a funny analogy. Like we had a hard time actually finding a Confederate flag and big shout out to Maggie's partner who actually painted that Confederate flag that was in the show. But um, all I have to say, I think that symbol of like, I, I'm not gonna take it down for you. I'm not gonna do this for you. Like you need to be the ones to tear it and burn it down. I'm gonna pop around it to Brittany. Um, thank you. Thank you, Florence, for that question. Um, so, I mean, you all know that I know Florence, my community rolls deep. So grateful for everyone being here. She actually messaged me during my play about, um, or during the play about the hoodie, and I had not made that connection. Um, I like to think, I think, through like, that everything had a reason. So, I mean, in the beginning, I hope people caught that like it was supposed to be like a FaceTime call. A lot of that was just because clearly they're in two different spaces. And the more and more I thought about what I could control, that just mean it made it seem like that, you know, that could explain everything about them being in different places. And I also hope that people would wonder um, where um, the child was. And then also again, model like me, you have to have this conversation over FaceTime because your child is with a different parent or different family. Um, so the hoodie really was really just to help the actor Jalen appear as young as possible because they are not in fact seven, she's not seven years old. Um, but that was the thought around that. So I'm glad that it had kind of a, an unconscious um, role as well. Um, and then for the line that stood out to me the most honestly was after they sing the water gun song, um, Jules, the parents' reaction is like, oh, like, I like it. And it took a while for it, that to grow on me. Um, but I thought of it as like, okay, who knows if the parent actually likes the fact that they have to sing a song or that their child feels that this is a way to make things safer. Um, but at the same time, they're like affirming the child's innovation and the child's thought process and not just saying like, that would never work. You can't just sing a song and then people will not, you know, murder little kids who play with guns. Um, so that's what I have. It's complicated parenthood. I take that moment as like, that's, yeah, that's completely the parent to the child. Like, I love this child. Like, I love my child. Like, yeah, that's that's like, that's what that's about. Yeah. And, but yeah, the, the viewers, like, again, it's that painful. I don't know. Something wrong with me. I just love, I live, I just live in the like, to me, it just, it has to come from, there has to always be a basis of like awfulness, <laughs> you know, because it's just, it's, it's, it's just, it's how we survive in it. It's what we do. It's how we navigate. It's the complication to me is so beautiful. You know, and uh, to me, that's just that's for me as a writer. That's where I if I'm not doing that, then it's then it's BS, you know, but the love that I have for my children hurts. Mm. It hurts because I know how dangerous the world is, you know. So anyway, I just want to throw that out there because I appreciate you saying that because I'm like, you're right. It is like there's also the all the things that you know, the parent wants to just say that you just can't. I mean, I, I, you know, right now Thanksgiving's coming up and my wife who, who has, you know, native blood is also just like, no, no, no. To tell your teachers to tell you the truth. <laughs> and my son's like, dude, are we just, I just want to know if we're gonna have turkey and gravy. <laughs> but we're getting turkey and gravy, right? <laughs> 
and you want to give him the turkey and gravy because he's a great kid and he deserves turkey and gravy, you know. And the thing I always remind myself of is, you know, he's got time. I didn't know it all either, you know. It, it, it came later in life. But at the same time, you know, my aunties and my grand, you know, just being like, there ain't nothing wrong with you. There's something wrong with them. You know, it's like some of that stuff does stay with you. And you, you learn later what they meant by that. Yeah, I guess it's uh, down to me. The funny thing uh, about hashtag matter is there's a lot of science terminology in it. Um, and the only person who understood it was Andrea. Um, so um, it's really interesting, though, because it, one of the lines that still got to me is kind of science related. Um, Kim, who was played by the uh, incomparable Shalia Harris, says Cole wants to know how he fix it but I just woke up like this. Um, I don't know how to go into the hearts and rewire the circuitry. And I think I, even to even throw back to the earlier question, one of the things that really drew me to hashtag matter is the fact that I've had this conversation before um, many times. And the thing that sticks is that even though Kim has probably had this conversation before, she's still having it with Cole and actually is reminiscing about like, this is not just some random person on Instagram who was like, oh, like they have history, you know? And I think those are the toughest conversations is when you do have history and when it feels like the burden is on you to now educate everybody you've ever loved. And that, especially because, you know, Kim dies at the end of the show. And so the way we were playing it, um, like Kim has been dead the whole time. This is a memory they're going through. And even in death, still feeling that, that like commitment to educate everybody you've ever loved is something that I think is so real to me and so real to a lot of you know just black people um and it's 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 a tough thing to navigate but um I think it's something to always think about I don't have the answer to it I don't know how to I don't know how to rewire the circuitry I don't know what to do about it I don't know how to stop and feeling like oh, I don't need to do this anymore but it's something that I think is worth meditating on so We do have um, one more hand raise. Okay, Sarah Kuhn, I hope I'm saying that correctly. Sarah! Hi, Krista. Oh Hi. my God, I, I can't, I don't think it's appropriate for me to have the last word, but I'm gonna dive in anyway. I just wanna thank all of you for a really wonderful experience, just beautifully written, beautifully conceived, beautifully executed. I really, really appreciate spending my Sunday afternoon with you. And I'm a 68 year old white woman and I've spent a lot of my life listening to white people and I really need more black voices in my life. So I really uh, want to go on supporting you and supporting the performing arts and Krista, you're the one person here that I that I know. And I, I just want to thank you so much for your vision in starting Free Soil Arts and the rest of you. I, I hope to know you more in the future. So I really appreciate your voices very much and I hope you will keep raising them. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you. Um, Karen Idris, do you want to wrap it up? Anything you want folks at home to sit with? Well, um, I just wanted to um, say real quick that um, that this, this started back in May um, after the incident with George Floyd. And I went to, uh, I, I thought about it and I, and I, uh, you know, again, I, I felt like I, I just, I wanted to do something and I, I needed to do something. And then when I heard about Idris's plays, I, I immediately then went to Krista who I'd been wanting to work with before and we had, hadn't really had the chance. And I said, do you want, can we partner and can we do this? And so I, um, I, want, uh, I want this to continue in terms of as a educator, as the chair of performing arts at Middlesex, I don't, I, and I mentioned this to Idris before, this is a conversation that isn't just starting. We're, we've been in the middle of this forever. And so, and I, and I 
I just want to share my commitment to continuing to have these conversations and educate myself um, as well as my students um, and, and, and committing to keeping this going has just been really super important to me. So I, I just wanted from the bottom of my heart, I wanna thank all of you um, for, um, for sharing your incredible creativity and, and, and talents and heart and soul um, to, to working on this project. And, um, and I, I, I so appreciate it. And um, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna work very hard to um, be checking myself and making sure that, that this doesn't go you know, away, um, the, these, kinds of, these kinds of conversations. Um, and Krista, you're beautiful. And I just, you know, I've had such an incredible time um, putting this together with you. And so I just, you know, I want you guys to have the final word here. So Idris, thank you again. Um, and Krista, I'm gonna turn it over to you. Um, and uh, so thank you, everybody. Um, same, thank you, 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 thank you. We all know Lowell, Massachusetts is a place that is rich culturally and diverse. <laughs> Our arts community is not, it's not, it's not. <laughs> so this, it's not. <laughs> so that's the whole reason why Free Soul is here so that folks of color have a voice, they have agency over their voice, they get paid for their time, they get paid for their work. And um, being able to have a space where all of y'all can come together, like Brittany, the fact that you haven't directed before, Serial, the fact that you live in Lowell, but you've never directed in Lowell. Like Jasmine, Sarah, Rosalind, like we need, we all we need is the opportunity. That's all we need. And y'all are part of, I want y'all take your mute off. I'm just saying, y'all are part of the solution. You know what I'm saying? All we need is the space and look at what's happened. Like Karen is a partner in creating that space and we just need more of that. So I'm just grateful that when the call was sent out, that y'all signed up, that you want to direct in a pandemic. All the actors out there finding joy in a pandemic. My God, all of you actors, I see you, I feel you. Um, so emotional. Imani, yes. But the fact that y'all decided to do this during this time, I'm forever grateful. So just thank you. Thank you so much. Um, Idris, no pressure, but. <laughs> get the I last mean, word, honestly, buddy. No, I mean every, every everything I just heard is is just so satisfying because that's that's fundamental fundamentally philosophically what I believe in as a as an artist. You know, um I I've had plenty of things happen to me that could be described as like you know, successes, right? but it doesn't feel like this feels this feels those things happen and don't happen it's cool i'm grateful but this to me is the stuff that really matters to me and so hearing how you all are speaking to each other and what you're going to build together and knowing that this work that i put out in the world specifically because i said somebody needs this and you all said yeah we we did need this and now and 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 we're also going to do things that our community needs is you know i'm good thank you and keep it up and consider me an ally appreciate y'all yes yay thank you so much i guess that's it <laughs> or 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 dot 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 right Thank you so much. We will be posting this video online. So for any of your friends who weren't able to check it out today, it'll be out there in the world. Mm -hmm. um, so thank you all for your time, for your support, for your love. Idris, thank you so much. Karen, mm -hmm. thank you so much. Directors, actors, thank you so much. Do something fun tonight if you can. Yeah. And that's it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Idris.